Hey everybody, Bosco Piper UK. It is the 24th of September 2016, Saturday evening. I've um, got a few, couple of bits and pieces in the post today. Um, not Yabos, just wanted to show you them. Um, before I do that, I've um, taken out a couple of cigars from my humidor. This one is from April this year. This is a, a Partagas Serie D, number four. And this, I just put a label on them sometimes. I don't always do it, but sometimes when I want to know how old they are. So that's from April 16. And I paid £19 for it. And this is a Serie C, number three. And it's a limited edition 2012. Now, the reason why I took these out tonight was because um, I did an order recently from I Havana based on Pottsville Piper's recommendation, uh, James. And um, so I've ordered a couple of boxes, um, not large boxes, I, th I think they're 10 cigars each. I, I just wanted to do my first order a little bit tentatively, see how that goes, see, you know, how long it takes to arrive and see what the condition of the cigars are and so on. And uh, if that works out, then I'll probably order some more in the future. Um, also want to see if my previous um, reservations about uh, consistency of construction of Cuban cigars is really... Um, accurate or it's just perhaps bad luck um, so it would be good to see it in a box out of a box how many you know have issues but anyway so one of the boxes which um, I was thinking of getting was Partagas um, because number one I've not smoked a, part a Partagas before which I really would like to um, and also James highly recommends them and he's been smoking cigars before pipes as far as I know so I thought I'd give them a try um, so I was just kind of trying to think which one to go for, so I think I'm going to go for the D because I think these are available there, so if I do like it I can always buy it, um, and it's a regular line, whereas the limited edition is limited, which means perhaps best left in the humidor for a special day, being that it's limited. It's got a nice chocolatey aroma on that. So we're going to set that aside for now, we'll pop it in the aroma, in, in the uh, humidor. And that humidor, I've also got this Cohiba, which I'm also kind of itching to try. So you might see one of those come out in the, in the near future. So um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this ready and I'm going to fire it up. I'll read you quickly what it says on Seagulls, limited.com. This is a well-balanced and smooth, classic Cuban Partagas aroma and construction which I'm hoping to learn what that means, because I don't know Partagas aromas and construction. Wonderful, a king amongst Robusto cigars. So this is a full flavor. The length is 124 mil, which is four inches and seven eighths of an inch, which is practically five inches, 50 ring gauge. Um, so that's a classic Robusto size. So I'm gonna prepare it up. I'm gonna sh shift you over, because I wanna show you a couple of things. I'm gonna put you onto the table tripod, and we'll take it from there. So I've got a couple of tins of Jermaine's um mixture, a latke mixture that's going to a mate across the pond. What I wanted to show you was, actually let me just light this up. So here we go, this is the uh, Partagas number four. Um, from what I can see, they're, they're pretty full on, so I'm going to take it slow. Um, construction wise, it feels quite spongy. Um, the wrapper looks quite thin, it's quite a, it's like a mid-brown wrapper. The aroma is, is quite nice, it's peppery. It's peppery and earthy and spicy and, and perhaps a bit of cocoa in there. The drawer is quite cedary and it's quite tight. So the other thing I wanted to show you was a pipe which I got, which although I've uh, been saying now that I'm slowing down on my pipe acquisitions, I am, he said. Um, but this particular pipe came up and it really looked interesting and um, the price was okay. Um, but unfortunately, I think it's got a fatal flaw, which means I might send it back, but we shall see. So this is the pipe. This is a Sassini 5 dot. It's a beautiful looking pipe. It's got a lovely plateau top there. Nice deep black stain with some lovely, lovely ring grain going on. Really, really nice. It's a hefty pipe. I should imagine this weighs it's a 60 really or 70 grams. Fantastic looking pipe. I like the plateau. I've not in the past gone for plateau pipes wasn't my thing but on this pipe it just works 
This thing, the bowl on this thing is huge. I mean, it's, it's, I couldn't even get my finger all the way down. It's the whole of my pinky goes in there, pretty much. It's a huge bowl. Um, but the main issue for me is, yes. and I'm gonna have to brighten it up and see if you can see inside it. Now you can see the hole there. That hole is a long, elongated hole, and it comes almost to the top of the shank, to where your mortise uh, connection is for the tenon to go. If you have a look at the length of the tenon on that, I would say that 90% or 95% of that hole is closed over by this tenon, and that's a huge problem. Um, when I draw on it. You're, it's pretty much blocked. I mean, you can get air through it, but it's most definitely going to have an issue on the smoke. And um, I don't want to light it up in case I want to send it back. I'd rather let them have it back as new and they can perhaps fix it, do something with it, maybe shorten the tenon on it or something. There's no reason for them to lose a new pipe. So I'll get in touch with them. But um, I just thought I wanted to share that because it is a lovely looking pipe. But, you know, sometimes when you buy a pipe, you just got to take care and check it thoroughly before you light it up. There are some things sometimes which are, which do go wrong with it. And you know, they, they don't mean anything by it, I'm sure. They just, um, I don't know, could have done with a little bit more quality control. I'm not gonna say where I bought this. I don't think that would be fair. Um, but just uh, if it helps somebody else when buying a pipe, you know, that's always, the first thing to check is the, the route of the airflow going from your stem into the shank to make sure that it's smooth, smooth running straight through. And I suppose you could tell that by uh, putting a pipe cleaner through it. I'll show you what I mean by contrast in the Furavara pipe that I just got. Yeah, see, it stops dead. So if I hold it there, that's the length. Oh, it does go through. Uh, no, so what's happening is it's going through, but not into the hole. It's going through into that reservoir, at, uh, which I don't believe was intended, personally. So you've got the hole at the top, I don't know if you can see it. There's a hole right at the top there. And I don't know why my camera's not brightening up. I'm telling it to brighten up, but it's not. But anyway, the hole is around there, and then you've got a reservoir drilled all the way down there. And that's where the pipe cleaner is going. Uh, I don't know, I'll have a word with them, maybe maybe it'll be okay, I don't know, we'll have to see. But I wanted to show you, by contrast, this is my Ferrovara pipe. This is a Calabash, and a curved pipe is always hard to carve in a way which allows you to pass a pipe cleaner through it. And Phil, being the sort of the perfectionist that he is, um, I can imagine him just sitting on this for hours on end, carving out that junction there to ensure that a pipe cleaner does get through. Now, have a look. Right, if we take that out, that's going right to the bottom there without a problem going through that junction without any issues at all and you can see the hole there and the hole there bang center no issues um so um all in all this pipe is really something special for me as i've mentioned in the uh, previous videos about this pipe and if you haven't uh, looked up for Rivara, you should be doing that if you're in the market for artisan pipes for pipes which are made honestly and traditionally and with dedication and passion then uh, look up for Rivara. I mean there's plenty of other pipe makers as well I don't want to offend anybody else but you know you've got Rick Black, Paul Menard um, Gabe's Pipes um, there's, I mean you just go on Instagram and uh, you can see a huge plethora of pipe makers and each and every one of them you know they're all fantastic carvers so 
That's my first ever Partagas, Series D, number four. I assume the D and the four mean the same thing, but I don't know enough about the uh, history of Partagas to know what the uh, nomenclature denotes. Plenty of smoke. It's already quite full-bodied in the flavour and the aroma is lovely I'm getting cedar a bit of cocoa pepper and perhaps a little bit of fruitiness might be wrong there bit of leather. That fruitiness may be a little bit of an almondy kind of flavour. But it's full bodied the flavour. That's um, already within the first third. It's pretty full on. <coughs> bit of earthiness there, bit of dry earthiness there as well. Quite a lot of flavours in this one. Quite interesting. Lots of smoke. And in terms of the um, the draw, it felt tighter on the dry draw. But at the moment, it's a hair's breadth away from perfection on the tight side. The other day, I had a cigar which was a hair's breadth away from perfection for me on the loose side, on the open side, this is the other direction. So it's really very, very good. For me, a very slight touch on the tight side. But it wouldn't be fair to say it's tight, it's not. It's very good. Good draw, good construction. But I could see that this could get too close to being too tight, so it would be interesting to see a batch of these, if they're consistent or not. If they're consistent at this uh, level of draw, that would be excellent. Definitely got some sweetness in there with that pepper. Some faint coffee coming through now on the finish. It's not very prominent in the coffee. This is more about pepper and that woodsy, leathery kind of um, sort of earthy kind of notes. With a bit of that almondy kind of thing running in there somewhere. Ash nicely stacked so far. Burn line is starting to go a bit, but as I always say, it could be to do with the fan in my room. I'd like to keep the air moving. Anyway, I shall come back to you soon. Just catching up on some of my uh, YouTube videos, subscriptions. Um, just watching Alex George smoking some Penzance. I know there's a lot of people out there who still haven't smoked Penzance and I really I feel for you. It took me a long time to get it and when I got it I could see what the fuss was about. I've moved over to now to some Earl Grey tea. I thought it might be a better combination with this cigar. The coffee together with a pretty, pretty full on cigar was I thought the tea might just cut through it a little bit. This uh, started tunneling, as you can see, but it's fixing itself. I haven't had to As I was showing pretty good. the Phil Rivara pipe, I thought um, of something I'd like to say. Um, and this is aimed at um, new pipe smokers and seasoned ones, but it's really to share an experience which I had at the beginning when I first started. <clears throat> and this is about um, pipe imperfections. Now, if you look at my video about this pipe on my channel, um, you will 
see that I mentioned a couple of little flecks. I don't like to call them flaws because they're natural. Um, but the flecks, a couple of, you can see there if you look in the shining light there. Uh, just over there you've got one. And there's there's a few dotted around the pipe. And as long as they don't affect the overall look of the pipe, and of course not the, the function of the pipe, I don't think it's a problem. If they're so bad that it just makes the pipe, you see it as soon as you look at the pipe, then yes, you have a problem, but you don't on this pipe. Um, the point I want to make is this. When I first started smoking a pipe, I first started uh, going on IG. This was in December last year or January last year. I haven't been on IG very long. And like anything else you buy, you expect perfection something that you're buying brand new, you expect it to be right. Now, my first pipe, my first ever pipe, was a Butch Chiquen, which I bought in Cigars and Snuff in Common Gardens. And I knew nothing about pipes, so to me that was a perfect pipe. There was nothing actually wrong with it. The drill perhaps was a bit off, but in terms of cosmetics, it was beautiful. I've got that pipe in a drawer still somewhere. I don't smoke it, but that's my first pipe, so I keep it. Um, my second pipe was my uh, Christmas Savinelli, the 606. This one again, to me, it was perfection. There was not a single flaw on it, and it smokes fantastically well. And that was I was very lucky that I picked this pipe, because again, I, I knew nothing about pipes. So I had a very, very positive experience with this pipe. No gurgling, no issues with the draft just smoked very very well and um, so I had a good experience with that so my expectations of pipes was pretty high when it comes to spending anything over 60 70 pounds you know maybe 80 90 dollars um, and I quickly went on to getting a, a pretty decent collection of pipes um, not perhaps by the standards of some of my uh, co-members in the London Pipe Club. Um, some of the guys there have got three or four thousand pipes, which I think is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, but there you go. So, I mean, at my peak, I've had about somewhere between 40 and 50 pipes. And at the moment, it's um, despite selling off some, I've still got a couple of new ones coming every so often. So I'm around that kind of mark, somewhere between 40 and 50. <clears throat> I haven't done a precise count. Um, and I don't really expect that to grow exponentially because I, you know, if I buy new ones and I do try to um, sell or give the ones that I don't smoke so much, I mean, they're all uh, good pipes, but I just don't want to have too many pipes. At least ones if I'm not using them. So when I first started buying pipes, I remember going on IG and uh, I was looking at a pipe, a really nice looking pipe. It was a straight Dublin, as I remember, but it had a nice double sort of, you know, the ones where the stem is carved into the shank, like a split, half split, I don't know what they're called. And I was uh, communicating to and fro, and I was asking questions about the pipe. And the guy reacted big time, and he started swearing at me, using the F word and stuff. And he says, if you want a pipe, buy it. If you don't want it, don't buy it. And I, I was kind of completely shocked because the only interactions I'd had on IG was were positive, you know, really friendly, warm, um, you know, really lovely interactions with anybody on IG and mostly on YouTube as well. Um, so I just left it. I'm not going to deal with somebody like that who, you know, somebody wants to buy your product, you can have the decency to discuss it with them without getting offended. So even though I see his pipes from time to time, I won't ever buy from him. Um, at least I don't intend to ever buy from him. It just puts you off. But over the sort of year or so that I've been buying pipes, I have, you know, because I've bought from artisans, most of my pipes are perfect. Um, and when you buy uh, sort of factory pipes, those are always pretty much always perfect because they're factory pipes and they're, you know, they're off a uh, 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 production line and generally speaking they'll be perfect 
Um, well, what I've learned is that if I take this pipe as an example, number one, I think that it's um, it pays respect. I've mentioned this. I've touched on this in in one of the videos. It pays respect to the to the to the, the natural product. You know, if it's not discarded just for the fact that it's got a little fleck on it, which is perfectly natural and the way it was created, um, to throw this piece of beautiful piece of briar away, I think, is terrible. Um, just for the fact that it's got a couple of marks on it. Um, obviously, there is a point where it goes beyond um, where it loses its aesthetic values, and you know, for for most people, pipes are well. For many people, pipes are about the smoke and about the way it looks. So when it gets to a point where it affects it sort of so universally that it doesn't look nice, then yes, I, I think that's reasonable not to use it or not to want such a pipe. But I think besides for that, I think it's good for the soul to have something which isn't one million percent perfect. And that's something which I've learned in the last couple of months where I've had um, artisan pipes where because it's not machine made and because it's not off a production line, there will be some slight imperfections. Um, and I think it adds to the charm of a pipe. I think it adds to the, it speaks volumes about the because carver. I've said this before about an honest carver. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I think that sort of really says a lot about his um, modus operandi, if you like. That's, the, that's him, he's an honest person. And you know, from that point alone, that, that kind of makes me want to buy pipes from him because I know that what I'm gonna get is an honest product. And, and reasonable value. So my message to new pipers is, if you buy a, a pipe, especially if you buy a pipe from an artisan, and it's got a slight, I don't want to call it imperfection, if it's got a, a, something which is slightly different to the rest of the pipe, such as a little fleck, don't balk at it. Don't automatically say this is a second, this is faulty, this is um, you know really shoddy workmanship, and send it back. That's my personal view. You know, some people might be fussy and um, very finicky, and and they won't be prepared to. Accept. Like I said, I think it's good for the soul to have something which is not perfect, as long as it doesn't affect the way it smokes and the overall look of the pipe. I think it's. Um, I'd like to pay homage to all of those carvers out there who struggle. Um, with blocks of briar and just discard them because they know that people are going to be super fussy about it. Um, a good example actually, now that I think about it, is this church warden pot which was made by Paul Menard. Um, this actually came with, he, he sent this to me with a, with a couple of different stems which but I tend to use it mostly with this uh, stem. Now this um, piece of briar is a lovely grainy piece of briar and he's done a beautiful design on the top with a bit of uh, plateau showing there and he's done an awesome job as he always does um, but what people may not realize is that he went through five blocks of briar before he got this one uh, because this was a custom order and I wanted a pot with thick walls particular kind of idea and you know in order for him to be able to do that he just went through because he had to get some you know really hefty decent pieces of briar um, and he went through five blocks of briar till he got one which was good enough he felt to send it on and um, I just felt really guilty about that I actually sent him I ordered him some blocks of briar from a supplier in America and I got them sent to him uh, because I felt so guilty that he's had to go through five blocks of briar for that and I think a lot of that is because people are so super fussy about things so I've taken a lesson from that and I try very hard to persevere with the pipe as long as it's not faulty I will persevere and as long as the overall look of the pipe is not damaged uh, not, is not destroyed by any imperfections this pipe which I started with tonight um, this has got a flaw in the actual smokeability of it and therefore this one I may well give back or I may even send it back ask them to adjust it and send it back to me I don't want them to feel that they're, that they're losing out on a sale because I'm, I'm being too finicky um, but so that's my uh, little speech. For hey, so well into the final third now, coming to the end of the cigar. And at this stage, for me, it's lost its vitality. The first third for me was the best third.
the best part of the cigar. It was pretty full already in the first third, but it had good flavors. It had plenty of earthy, sort of woody, bit of cedar, bit of chocolate, not really that much coffee at all, maybe a slight touch for a bit of time, um, and pepper. And it had some good tobacco flavor in there as well. In the second third, well, towards the end of the second third, I was getting mostly tobacco, rich tobacco flavors, and a bit of the pepper, a little bit of the sweetness, but um, it, start, it was starting to drop off already, and it wasn't as full. It kind of seemed to mellow out a little bit in terms of strength and body. In the final third, it's really all about tobacco. You've still got a touch of all of those flavors, but really very, very slight. It's tobacco starting to eat up, starting to get to that sort of... It's not bitter yet, but it's, you know, on its way. And um, it's nice, not great. It's got good, rich tobacco flavors now with some pepper. So I'm going to leave this video here. I've gone on for far too long. I'm going to try and edit it to shorten it a bit. Um, and uh, I wish everybody a fantastic week. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, what's left of it. So that's that. Have a great weekend and catch you on the next one.